Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. If you have not seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney uh, at Myrick O'Connell, way over in Westboro. Uh, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. Um, Frank and Mary, if you've been to my presentations at the at the Northboro Library or in the in the area, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in and live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means Northboro, that means right here. They don't want to go to Southboro. They don't want to go to Marlboro. They God knows they don't want to go to like San Diego with their grandchildren. No, they want to be right here. So the question is, who are the people you need to know? What are the programs you need to know about in order to live in your house until you die right here and be buried in the backyard? So with me is my friend Liz Tridiak, um, who has been se the senior center director. Um, but you may never have met her since before COVID because she started like almost exactly the same time that COVID hit. And so we decided that for today, today she usually gets these great guests. And today we've got a special one, which is her, because she's going to be talking about in this great moment, the great opening up of our world again, uh, what it has been like to be doing, be doing this as senior center director over the last um, a lot of months now, almost a little over a year. And to, maybe to begin kind of where you think things are going, where she thinks things are going. So here we go, Liz. Uh, it's almost it's almost Memorial Day as we film this. <clears throat> what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What what's going well, on, and and what's it been like? And let's just talk about this is we're, we're gonna this is kind of like the the like the final show of the COVID season, you know? That's crazy to think about because we've been this doing this right from the very beginning. Yeah, I think so. My start date was. April 6th, 2020. And within that first, that was the very first day the building was closed to the public. I met <laughs> the interim director outside the front door and she handed me the key and, and that was how this all started. But you and I, Arthur, started the show maybe like two weeks after that to, right. to introduce me, I guess, to the Northboro community. And it's just been such a crazy time. A crazy time. Um, and, and by the way, I really appreciate you doing those shows. And I think that this is this experience has also, I think, shown a lot of folks, including a lot of seniors, as well as some public officials and stuff, the importance of Northbrook Cable, right? Absolutely. And just in terms of providing an ongoing way to communicate with a lot of folks who otherwise who may not be totally comfortable with other tech mechanisms, right? Mm -hmm. but who've been watching the show. So I, I think I really appreciate your willingness to step up and do the, you had done shows like this before to kind of step up and do them. I think it's really been terrific. Uh, I mean, this past year without cable, I don't know where we would be because they've gotten us through our YouTube shows, our presentations, set up a whole YouTube channel for us. Uh, and that, you know, the virtual is not going away now, you know, it's here right. to stay. I think we all kind of got forced into this new era of programming for senior centers. And it's pretty right. exciting to be kind of on the cusp of all of that. But the great news is Arthur, June 1st, we're opening. We're full doors opening. And it it's hard to, I think I said this in one of our other shows, it's hard to say reopening or opening because we've been open. We've been here every day throughout the pandemic. Um, and working from home. There's always been somebody in this building and we've still been working, but our doors are not going to be locked anymore. As of June 1st, the public can come in and we're, we're just thrilled. We just can't wait to see everybody. And I am so excited to meet people, not through a computer screen. <laughs> right, right. So, so are you going to plan like an opening party just for you? You know, it's like a, like, it's like meet, Liz Tridiark, I've been here forever, but you didn't know who I really was, right? Every day is a party. Right every, every day is a party. Yeah, that's a real. Yeah, so throughout the pandemic, I did a couple um, like meet and greet coffee hours outside when the weather was nice. And um, I do plan to do a big welcome back party once I feel a little more comfortable with the gathering of larger crowds. And let's let's see, let's not rush into it too fast. Um, but yeah, it's funny because throughout the pandemic, every time somebody either walked up to the door or pulled in the parking lot, 
I and I'd run out and I'd say, Nancy, who's that? Who's Who here? <laughs> and I'd go introduce myself because I felt a little attention starved right. here by myself. Um, so yeah, it's been really, really fun to see people coming into the building and hopping up and going out and introducing myself to people. I've only seen like their email addresses or yeah. um it, it's just fun to see people it's just fun so and when you say the building is opening up so will there be any constraints are there any mask issues are there any social distancing issues are there any things that are, are there any changes in the procedure of the building of the building's operation that that, that will be changing at least in mm -hmm. the short yeah, that's a really good question. I think throughout this whole pandemic, we've worked really hard to put in some really solid policies and procedures to keep everyone safe. And I have this like 11 page document here on my desk that was step by step by month by month, how we were gonna scale back up. And then what was it last week or the week before with Governor Baker's new announcement of May 29th, it's like boom, right? Boom, yeah. Right. So there goes all the big plans. But luckily, we are keeping some of our um, a majority of our plans in place to scale back up in a, a more controlled, slow manner, just to make sure everything is going well. So as of June first, our doors will be open. People can come in just to browse the bookshelves, the puzzle shelves, um, socialize in our lobby, a little um, fireplace area. Um, drop in for pool, things like that. You you don't have to make an appointment anymore. You can just come in. We are requiring that everybody scans in or signs in just in case we need to do some contact tracing in the future. Yeah. Um, masks will not be required, but we will be encouraging them, um, especially for folks who, uh, no, just in general, we'll just be encouraging them. Because you never know somebody's circumstances at home. You don't know if they're living with somebody who's immunocompromised or if they're taking right. care of their grandchildren who are too young to be vaccinated um, or just the, the, that's their comfort level. And I, um, and I suppose the kind of the flip of that is that if I'm coming in and I am nervous because I don't know about other folks and other folks might not have it. And so that I have a mask, no one's going to like make fun of me for having a mask, you know, because no. we're, we're going to be in this world where... I mean, I think of my sister. I have a wonderful, I'm the youngest of six, you know, so all of my, my siblings are older um, because I am like a mere 71, but all of the, the, you know, they start at like 76, you know, they're, they're pretty old. And, and I was just talking to one sister who's still very uncomfortable leaving, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, but I think that, you know, because for a whole variety of reasons, you know, and, and, and I think it's, it's important for folks to understand that's okay that everybody, I think people are really going to be respectful of the fact that you're, you know, you're deciding and in the mask, one of the things we've really come to appreciate the mask protects you. Certainly if you had COVID, it would be protecting other people, but it also protects you so that you can feel comfortable going to the senior center, even though everybody there, you know, doesn't have a mask on. Right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah, cool. it you know everyone is going to hopefully be respectful of one another, because um, there are, like there's still breakthrough cases coming through for people who have been vaccinated. So it's good to be cautious, and we'll just keep encouraging that. Right, right, and you know, and once again, for folks who hear about that, we that we've got to keep remembering. You know, nobody ever had a vaccine that was a hundred percent. You know. It was like 90 percent and what so but we've had how many people vaccinated now 50 million you know so what so it's 10 percent of 50 million is 500 thousand people so mm -hmm. you just maybe you're one of the unlucky ones so you got so to the extent that you're really worried about that you know you can take care of yourself by wearing that mask you know yeah. so but they're not but they're certainly not required right and how about any social distancing issues we're going to encourage social distancing we have rearranged um, the furniture and the staff here yeah. so that we can promote distancing. Um, chairs have been removed, staff are further apart, and we're going to keep that, that distance for now. Um, in terms of bringing programs back in, yeah. so far right now we're only doing programs um, that are about 10 people or less indoors, and we're still going to be doing 
virtual and outdoor programming as well. Um, but anything that's large or requires high exertion, like um, the exist. high aerobics courses, yeah. Yeah. we'll bring back more slowly. I see. Now, and are you, are you starting off bringing those back at all? Or is that, or is that going to be a delay until you kind of get up and running, it's specifically the, the, the aerobics classes? There'll probably be a delay with those, maybe mid-summer coming back. Um, the, the low exertion classes like um, Tai Chi are already back in the building and those have been going really well. And we'll, we'll see, we'll, we're being cautious, <laughs> but yeah. they will be back. And for the Tai Chi classes, is there, is there a limit on the, on the enrollment in those? Yeah, we're requiring less than 10 people just so everyone can safely distance in our program rooms. I see. I see. And now is that as I walk in, it seems to me that there's a big program room kind of on the right, kind of going at the at the end on the right. Is that where the is that where Tai Chi happens? Or does do things happen in the are there things happening in the bistro? What you know? Yeah. I, um, yeah, talk a little bit more. I know we had our we had our last guests were those that the the fag God, they were terrific, right? Weren't they? Your bistro team is awesome. Right? Oh, they're so awesome. good. I have my lunch over there waiting for me. I oh, ordered today. It's okay. going to be good. That's but yeah, the bistro so opened this week, this Monday, just yesterday. And um, we had over 30 people come through for lunch. Yeah. It went off beautifully. Um, so as for at least for the month of June, we're going to keep that bistro area, that large multi-purpose room that the bistro is in just for food. Uh, I'm not going to be putting any um, exercise classes in there just yet. I don't want to rush things. I want to see how they go. So most of the programs will be down the other two hallways where we have um, the classrooms and fitness rooms. Yeah, I get it. I yeah. get it. So, so, but a lot of those programs will be coming back. So tell us, so there's the, you, you tell us kind of what is, what you think is going to be happening, for example, in June in those rooms. Can you just kind of talk about that? Oh, sure. Um, well, I'll first plug our chicken barbecue is June 8th. That's coming up. You don't want to miss that. So we and have it, the, the chicken barbecue coming up. And we is, have, that, is that all outdoors or is there going to be a component of that that's also indoors? All of the food is going to be served to go style. We yeah. will have tables indoors and outdoors or you can take it with you. Oh, great. Yeah. But you, you can you can hang around. You know, yes. you, yep. Yep. So and, in and June. But, but I suppose that goes back to something you're said you've said about how this may be changing the way you do things in general going forward. So that notion of having a to-go option as well as mm -hmm. having a kind of a sit-down option, you know, it's probably going to, you're going to see yeah. that a lot. Yeah, I think to-go is also going to be something that sticks with us as well. I mean, it just makes, it's more convenient for folks. And um, we've done a lot of research into finding green products, environmentally friendly products, because Northboro has a, a good, strong initiative to go green. So we put a lot of thought into the little details of, of getting back up and running full speed. That's great. So for, so for the chicken barbecue, what, what, when is that? What day is that? And what are the times and what are the details? It's June 8th and it's between 12 and one is when you can get your food. You sign up by calling the senior center. Um, it is a limited ticket event, so people should call soon to sign up. And it's ten dollars for a half chicken, bistro made sides, including potato salad and coleslaw roll, and strawberry shortcake for dessert. And it's and it's all being made fresh there, right? Yeah. This is it has the seal of the seal of the bistro is on this. <laughs> Carolyn yeah. and Vicky will hand sign each box. Yeah. That's right. That's right. For for an extra for an extra donation, right? Just, yeah. Oh, but we have so many um, cool new things coming up in June. We have uh, music therapy live out back where Kara is playing guitar. That's been really popular. We have a new art journaling um, called Earth Notes uh, program coming up in June. We have a bird watching seminar. We have a butterfly seminar, um, informational kind of class lecture. And all some of your favorite programs will be coming back too. So acapella is coming back and oh, Mahjong is back. Trivia is coming inside. I've got my trivia folks right here next to me on the laptop running. <laughs> that's, and that's, It'll be and, fun. And that's all happening in June? Uh, that's all happening in June. Big, 
big news. <laughs> so, so is there anything else other than the aerobics class, class that kind of isn't starting until later? Um, the Tuesday night dinners are still on hold as well. Haven't quite figured that piece out yet um, in the works of ironing out the details, but that, that won't be back just yet. But, but once again, you're kind of thinking about the summer, you know, you're <laughs> kind of, and I suppose everybody is, as you say, it's like all of a sudden and it's just going to be all open. And so I think a lot of people are kind of like holding their breath. Yeah. So, and also in, in the, like the senior center world, June, July, and August are typically the slowest months out of the year. Um, I don't know whether that's from people who are snowbirding or going elsewhere, vacationing, snowbirding was the wrong term, but vacationing. Um, yeah. It just seems to be a slower month. So it hopefully will give us time to um, ease back in and get things up and running and make sure we're ready to go. So that's exciting. So now, so t tell me a little bit about the, the year, kind of in in hindsight. You know, obviously there have been there have been ups and downs about the year. Can you just kind of talk about, you know, what's been good, what's been bad, your perception about how people have dealt with this and mm -hmm. how it maybe has changed them or changed some of their attitudes towards things. I'm just yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. So that's actually a really interesting point. Um, that you just mentioned there with how it's been affected or how people have been affected. We are putting together a time capsule of letters and photographs of people's experience of COVID-19 in the past 14, 15 months. And I actually recently got a call from somebody who said that they had been journaling. Um, well, one person said they had been journaling um, this whole pandemic so their grandchildren could read what the experience was like. But then somebody called me and said, you know, I've, I've been journaling, but um, it's not all positive, happy stories about resilience. It's really oh. tough, difficult feelings. And I said, you know what, that's, that's reality. That's, you know, your feelings are valid and they belong in the time capsule. We don't want to sugarcoat it. And this is what it was really like. It was really, really hard. And for some people, it's going to be more difficult easing back into, um, real life. We were just talking about this in a staff meeting yesterday of, you know, bringing staff back in the building. If you hadn't already had all your staff in, it's a, it's a big shock. It's a huge change of life. And for the past 14, 15 months, you've been almost afraid of getting too close to people, afraid to touch things. And then here it is, no June 1st, no masks and you can go wherever, go anywhere. It's just, it's just a shock to the system. And I think there's gonna be a huge mental health component to um, reopening the world that I don't know if we're ready for, not us in particular, but um, society as a whole. Like, are we ready for what's about to come? And, you, and, can you, and, and are you feeling comfortable about trusting other folks, about, the, about trusting, that people are going to be, you know, being careful about this stuff. But I, th I think what you just mentioned le would lead to a really interesting suggestion. I think we should talk to our good friends, Dana Volk, um, who is the, the wonderful producer who does these show and all shows, and also to Kathy Dalgleish, right, mm -hmm. about having them do a series about that. That would be a, you, you, I mean, you talk about a time capsule. Mm -hmm. But I think the most valuable time castle would be one that has a real video component to it that really speaks to and speaks specifically to seniors who have gone through this, right? Absolutely. Is that's the population that's been really hit. That's the population where where a lot of people know actually, you know, know somebody, have friends who died. Mm -hmm. died you know, and, and so to be to be getting and, and it is going to go away. I was just I was just talking to one of with one of my daughters about this. We, we were just down in D.C. We were seeing our our grandchild uh, who was going to be two in September, our only grandchild. And we hadn't seen him since last summer. Oh, my gosh. And he just came for a few days, you know, and now. So so for for a whole set of grandparents, there's been these huge delays in terms of, you know, watching your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. and, I think, be, be, but the, but people are going to forget this. People are going to forget this experience. It's going to be 
quick. You know, in in general, in, in it's going to be a year, it's going to be two years, and it's going to fade away. So right. to really have that, to really have that sense of what this meant, you know, and the senior yeah. center have a have a can play could play a great role in that, right? Just because because you're talking to people all the time, I bet, who've got these kinds of, as you say, there are some. Everybody's heard the resilience stories, you know, but for every one of those, there were those nine depressing days, you know, where you would just, right. where yeah. you would, and you just felt so trapped, and everybody just felt so trapped in their house, right? Yeah. So, so have you have you had people calling saying, yeah, you know, I really am, I don't think I'm ready yet, or I really don't want to be doing. Yeah, we have. We've had um, people call to sign up for the chicken barbecue, but want to make sure that theirs is to go because they're not quite comfortable coming inside and not quite comfortable taking the mask off to eat in public yet. And that's absolutely understandable and totally fine with us. We're willing to accommodate and happy to accommodate anybody who has that type of request. I mean, things are going to be hybrid from now on. When we do music therapy outside, we have a laptop set up and we're zooming it to five, four or five participants, and then we have 10 more on the patio. So every, I think things are just gonna be hybrid from now on. I mean, not, not everybody can um, jump up and get dressed and leave the house for a one hour exercise class and then come back or, or a 45 minute program and then go back home. It's, it's a lot. Sometimes it takes a lot for somebody to get that energy up. And is the, oh do you, when you speak of the so is the music person themselves live or are they zoomed in? They're live. She's live. She's here with her guitar and her amp, and we have people in a semicircle out in the patio and right. our trusty um, little TV dinner tray table right. <laughs> with the laptop set up on it, and it works beautifully. But I, but I suppose for you as the senior center director, when you're thinking forward toward the programming you can do, I suppose this 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 uh, uh, this availability of Zoom really kind of opens up your options also. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've heard of people, um, other senior center directors getting these really great speakers who are on the West Coast, you know, and they, before right. it would have been like, oh, that's, you know, not something I do. I don't, I don't um, video call, but right. now it's absolutely normal. And it just opens the door to far more programming options. Right. And, and, and even for little things like what we're doing right now, I mean, in my sense, I think we've talked about this a little bit. My sense is that this is actually a great format in which to do these shows in yeah. that, for, you know, like I, I'm thinking about, you know, in, in prior to you, you know, when, when I was doing shows at the at the uh, at the cable station, just the logistics of getting people to be able to kind of drop everything and drive to the station. And then we, now we've. We're hoping everybody is there, but oh, somebody had ran late and then somebody needed to leave early. And as opposed to this format and, and I think and Dana and once again, kudos to the to the to the cable. Right. I mean, I hope they all get a raise in this year's budget. No, I shouldn't say that. I know I'm not <laughs> supposed to say that, but but it, it's it's I think it's really added a whole extra dimension to the to the to the life of folks who are in Northbrook. Right. Mm -hmm. to be able to have this as an option. Right. Yeah. So I, I am hoping I'm, I'm watching my I'm watching my times. I'm trying to be careful about it, but I, I'm hoping that you'll consider continuing to do these shows. You know, I think that this has been. I love it. I th yeah, I think that this part has I think that this part has been a lot of fun. And, yeah. and, and and and, you know, as so and so I will I will say as a lawyer, right, one of the things that this um, period has done is that it has made people of all ages realize this sounds a little bit dramatic, but realize their mortality, realize their mortality that even if you are feeling fine, right? And even if you're fairly young, that that you you want to be aware of the fact that bad things could happen quickly. Uh, and and I, I emphasize that specifically regarding with regarding this project called the Conversations Project, which I know has been active in a lot of communities where really seniors are encouraged to not only have their healthcare proxy so that if they're in a position where, you know, the doctor has said they really can't make a decision, there's someone who can act for them, but also to have had a conversation with the person who has the healthcare proxy to know how they want to be treated, 
because mm -hmm. I think I just, I saw that a lot. I mean, I lost 17 clients. I lost 17 clients to COVID. Mm -hmm. That's, but that's, you know, when you think, of how, I mean, because I do nothing but this, right? So all of my, as I have no clients under 55, you know, my median client age is 74. So those are my people. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of saw it, but we, but we also saw these really sad situations play out where somebody is in the hospital and you can't go see them. Right. And, 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 and if you're the, and, and if, so that if that person in the hospital didn't, hadn't executed a healthcare proxy, they couldn't, there was no place, no way that they could actually execute it. Right. And, 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 or, or you have people who had been named on the healthcare proxy, but this happens all the time. People will name someone on their healthcare proxy, but not tell them. It's like, oh, well, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's one of my kids and, oh, she'll be fine and blah, 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 you know. And then I remember talking to a friend of mine, this is in, on, on Martha's Vineyard, and, and we were talking about at Martha's Vineyard, somebody at the hospital, we say, so how often when someone's there and you have to, and, and the doctor has, has, has said the proxy should be in effect, and you've called the person, how often do they, do they basically say, Oh, I didn't know I was the proxy. They said literally about 40% of the time. Oh, I said, yeah. you got to be kidding me, right? So that happened a lot, right? That happened, you know, that people were just being called who had no idea, no idea how, you know, how mom wanted to be treated with with situations like this, you know, did, did she want to be, there was with ventilator issues, there were all these issues. So hopefully that really acts as, um, and I think that I think I'm going to be focusing on it over this year because I think people are just more aware of this issue. So I think it's an, an important piece. So anyway, thanks for doing this show. I think that this is really I think for a lot of folks who have dealt with you virtually for a long, have been watching you virtually. Hopefully this will be an incentive for them to show up. Um, <laughs> there is a ton of things happening at your senior center, folks. You know, a ton of things. Right. It's now open. You, you know, there's if, if you're concerned about programming, Liz, if they want to call and ask about anything that's going on right now, who sh what number should they call? 508-393-5035. So just go for if for no other reason but to just meet Liz Tridiak, right? I mean, <laughs> she's doing a great job. She's been really, really trying to help out for, you know, for quite a while. And she's really excited about all the new possibilities at the Senior Center. So have a great day month have just a great month so liz i know we'll be, we'll be talking we'll probably be doing a show in june but thank you very much for doing this good luck next week i know this Thanks. will be a lot of fun thank you for watching folks and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of frank and mary here in northborough thank you very much <laughs>